Welcome to Maths Companion. Today, let us start the fifth chapter, Money Maths. Let us go to the first section, Interest for Interest. Look at the ads of two banks. 10% interest, 1 lakh rupees grows to 1.20 lakhs in 24 months. 10% interest, 1 lakh rupees grows to 1.21 lakhs in 24 months. If you deposit 1 lakh rupees in this bank, you will get 1.20 lakhs in 24 months. If you deposit 1 lakh rupees in this bank, you will get 1.21 lakhs in 24 months. Both banks give interest at the same rate. If the same amount is deposited for the same period of time, how come the amounts got are different? There are different ways of computing interest. Let us recall the method learned in 7th standard. 15,000 rupees is deposited for 2 years at 10% interest. What is the interest? This is the amount deposited, this is the time period and this is the rate of interest. That is amount deposited is 15,000, time period is 2 years and rate of interest is 10% or 10 by 100. Multiplying all these together, we get interest. That is, interest is equal to 15,000 into 10 by 100 into 2. Now we can cancel one zero from both numerator and denominator. Again, one more zero from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 1,500 into 2. And that is equal to 3,000. That is, the interest is 3,000 rupees. Now look at another problem. Anu and Manu deposit 15,000 rupees each in a bank giving 10% interest annually. After one year, Anu withdraw the entire amount including interest and redeposit it in the same day. After one more year, both withdraw the total amounts. Who got more? How much more? There are two persons, Anu and Manu. Let us take the case of Manu at first. He deposited 15,000 rupees. The bank gives 10% rate of interest. He withdrew his money only after 2 years. So the interest he got is 15,000 into 10 by 100 into 2. We can cancel zeros from both numerator and denominator. Then we get 1,500 into 2 or that is equal to 3,000 rupees. So the interest for 2 years is 3000 rupees. So after 2 years, he will get the amount which he deposited and interest for that. That is, he will get 15,000 plus 3000 or 18,000 rupees. Now let us consider the case of Anu. He also deposited 15,000 rupees. The bank gives 10% interest. But he withdrew the entire amount after 1 year. And he redeposit the entire amount in the same day. So let us find the interest which he got after one year. The amount deposited is 15,000, interest rate is 10% and time period is one year. Therefore, interest is equal to 15,000 into 10 by 100 into 1. We can cancel zeros from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 1500 into 1 and that is equal to 1500. So after one year, Anu got 1500 as interest. He withdrew the entire amount after one year. After one year, he will get the amount which he deposited and the interest for that. That is the amount after one year is 15,000 plus 1500 and that is equal to 16,500 rupees. This is the amount which Anu got after one year. He deposited this amount on the same day. So the second year he get interest for this amount. So the interest for the second year is 16,500 into 10 by 100 into 1. We can cancel the zeros from numerator and denominator. And we get 1650 into 1 and that is equal to 1650 rupees. After one more year, he will get this much amount which he has deposited and this interest for that. 
that is the amount after 2 years is 16,500 plus 1,650 and that is equal to 18,150. Now who got more? Anu got more. How much more? 150 rupees more. Why did he get 150 rupees more? For the second year, he got interest for this much amount. That is, he got interest for the amount he deposited in the first year and the interest for the first year. Whereas Manu didn't get interest for interest. That means, the amount Anu got more is the interest for the first year's interest. In many schemes, interest for each year is added to the current amount in calculating interest for the next year without actual withdrawal and reinvestment. Interest calculated thus is called compound interest. Interest calculated only on the original investment each year is called simple interest. That is, in the case of simple interest, we get interest only for the amount which we deposit. But in the case of compound interest, we get interest for previous year's interest also. That is why the second bank gives more returns. Another problem. Sumesh deposited 10,000 rupees in a bank which gives 5% interest compounded annually. How much would he get back after 2 years? This is the amount which he deposited. So this can be considered as the first year's balance. That is, first year's balance is 10,000 rupees. Now let us find first year's interest. The rate of interest is 5%. So first year's interest is 10,000 into 5 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. Then we get 100 into 5 or 500. This is first year's interest. Now what is the second year's balance? Second year, this interest is added to this amount and it is considered as the second year's balance. That is second year's balance is 10,000 plus 500 or 10,500 rupees. Now let us find second year's interest that is equal to 10,500 into 5 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator. Then we get 105 into 5 and that is equal to 525 rupees. After second year, he get both these amounts. That is, the amount after two years is 10,500 plus 525 or that is equal to 11,025 rupees. Now let us do problems on page 90. First problem. Sandeep deposited 25,000 rupees in a bank which pays 8% interest compounded annually. How much would he get back after 2 years? He deposited 25,000 rupees. So, first year's balance is 25,000 rupees. Rate of interest is 8%. Therefore, first year's interest is 25,000 into 8 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator and we get 250 into 8 and that is equal to 2000. That means first year's interest is 2000 rupees. Now let us take second year's balance. Second year's balance is first year's balance plus first year's interest or 25,000 plus 200 and that is equal to 27,000. Second year, he will get interest for this much amount. Now let us find second year's interest. Second year's interest is 27,000 into 8 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator and we get 270 into 8 and that is equal to 2160. We have to find the amount after two years. After two years, he will get second year's balance and second year's interest. That is, the amount after 2 years is 27,000 plus 2,160 and that is equal to 29,160. That is, after 2 years, he will get 29,160 rupees. Second problem, Thomas took out a loan of 15,000 rupees from a bank which charges 12% interest compounded annually. 
After two years, he paid back 10,000 rupees. To settle the loan, how much should he pay at the end of three years? He took out a loan of 15,000 rupees. So we can say first year's balance is 15,000. Rate of interest is 12%. Therefore, first year's interest is 15,000 into 12 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator and we get 150 into 12 that is equal to 1800 that is first year's interest is 1800 rupees now let us find second year's balance second year's balance is first year's balance plus first year's interest so second year's balance is 15000 plus 1800 or that is equal to 16800 rupees now let us find second year's interest that is equal to 16,800 into 12 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator and we get 168 into 12. Multiplying, we get 2016. Amount after two years is second year's balance plus second year's interest or 16,800 plus 2016. Adding together, we get 18,816. After two years, he paid back 10,000 rupees. So third year's balance is amount after two years minus this 10,000 or 18,816 minus 10,000 and that is equal to 8,816. Now let us find third year's interest. Rate of interest is 12%. Therefore third year's interest is 8,816 into 12 by 100. Let us first multiply 8816 by 12. Multiplying, we get 1,5792. When we divide it by 100, there should be two digits after the decimal point. So we get 1057.92. This means interest is 1057 rupees and 92 paise. When it is more than or equal to 50 paise, we round it to the next digit. So this can be written as 1058 rupees. If it is less than 50 paise, we can take it as 1057 rupees. Now to settle the loan, he has to pay third year's balance and third year's interest. That means the amount to be paid is 8816 plus 1058. Adding together, we get 9874 rupees. That is to settle the loan, he has to pay 9,874 rupees. Now, there is a homework. The simple interest at 5% got for a certain amount after 2 years is 200 rupees. If interest is compounded annually, what would be the interest for the same amount at the same rate after 2 years? We shall discuss the remaining part in the next video. Till then, bye.